All right, welcome to Logic 101B Queries. So what we're gonna talk about today is uh, SQL and what SQL is and what it's for and a little bit about how to use it. It is a language of queries. So by query, it's like a question, right? It's the question you ask of some server, right? These five are some of the most common that you'll see. So let's talk about how to run a SQL query. The easiest way for us to play around with SQL is to open up a tool like SQL Pro if you're on a Mac or any kind of SQL workbench-y sort of thing like this that lets you go in and run stuff. Let's say that I was to ask, how many pets are there? Seven. But the thing to understand is that we send SQL, this is SQL, and then we get other stuff back from the database. We get results. A lot of times these results are in the format of a table. Sometimes they're not. So if I want to do insert into pet, I don't actually know what our pet has, right? So I'm going to look at the structure of the table. And these are the different columns. You can see it's got created at, updated at, ID, name, and species label. So let's insert into pet, just give it a name for now. So name, values, gray one. All right, so you see there was like no results, right? But down here it says no errors, one row affected. And then back over here, I think I got to refresh. You can see there's gray wind. And that's what insert does, it's like create. So this is the most common thing you're gonna see in the land of SQL, was select query. You can type select star from, and then the name of the table. So star means everything, and then from is just saying which table, and pet is the name of the table. So I'll run that query. And you can see I get a little mini table here of results. How would I look up just the pet names? Like Spot, Rex, Alice, select name from pet. Now this is lighting up blue, which well, let's try running it anyway. Okay, it works. It just lit up blue. We could do pet.name. If I wanted to do the ID and the name of the pet, I could do pet.id, pet.name. So let's start with sorting. The way sorting works in SQL is order by. This is the same thing as sort and waterline. So in our case, we might do like order by pet.name. And sure enough, Alice, Felix, Greywind, etc. Now, if I wanted it to be in reverse order, then I could do descending. Or if I wanted to be more explicit, I could put ascending. And when I do ascending, I get A through Z and vice versa. Now, the next thing we're going to want to talk about is pagination. You know, right now we only have a handful of pets, right? But let's say that we had like 800,000 pets or so. That would be too many. Uh, you need to paginate sometimes. So the way that that works is with these things called limit. In, in Waterline in sales, we call it limit and skip. In SQL, it's called limit and offset. So let's just get the first five, right? So we'll do select pet ID, pet name from pet, limit five, order by pet dot name descending. Um, let's change it to ascending, and this will give us the first five pets, A through Z. This goes after the order by. Now let's say that we had a little button that said page one of two, page two of two, right? And you wanted to hit the next page option. Well then, it's like this is great for giving you the first page, but the next page we need to use offset. So offset five says skip the first five and give me the next five. If you were in the world of sales, you could do something like pet.find dot paginate and for the first page you would do zero and that would give you a reasonable page size second page one third page two you could also do limit five skip zero for page one page two page three let's actually run this so we only see three things right even though our limit is five and that's because there's only three things after you skip five of them okay last but not least the where clause um, you can do all this at the same time as you do a filter with where but i'm going to delete it for simplicity now, if I want to do where name, and I'll do pet.name for consistency here, is equal to spot. If I would do where pet.name is equal to drover, I get nothing because there's no pets named drover. You can also do multiple things, right? So I could do where pet.name is equal to spot, or pet.name is equal to drover. And you can see there's no pets named drover but there is a pet named Spot. And so I could even get uh, fancier with it. I could say where pet ID is equal to one and pet.name is equal to Spot or pet.name is equal to Drover. 
and I'm using parentheses. So I'm saying it has to, pet ID has to be one and one of these has to be true. Or the pet name has to be Drover or the pet name has to be um, Pete and pet.created at has to be greater than yesterday. Close my parentheses. There's more that you can do in SQL, and every database has its own little things that it lets you do. But at the end of the day, like what you actually need most of the time is equality, not equals, less than, less than or equals, greater than, greater than or equals. And really, you don't even need greater than or equals and less than or equals because you can always just adjust, right, and use greater than or less than. For strings, you'll also see contains, starts with, ends with, in SQL, you don't actually see them written like this. You have to use kind of a special thing called like. Let's get all of our pets at once again. But let's say that I want to find any pets whose name contains the letter T. So I can use like for that T. And unfortunately, like T isn't going to be enough. If I try to run that, I get nothing. Like is this special thing that you can kind of think is as like a super operator for like every permutation of contains, starts with, ends with. So with like, if I want to do a search for things that contain the letter T, I put a percent side on both sides. And you can see I get Spot and Tony. If I want things that start with the letter T, then I get rid of the percent sign on the left side of T. If I want things that end with T, I get rid of the percent sign on the right side of T. Basically, these percent signs are like wild cards. Now that we've covered select queries, sometimes it can be useful to do some aggregation, some math, some averaging. The three most common types of things you're going to see are sum, average, and count. Count, and then we'll just pick one of the columns, right? There it is. Select count and then the name of the column from pet. But I can also select count with a filter on, right? So I can select count pet.id from pet where pet.id is greater than four. That's going to be four. I could do count how many pets there are named spot with one. I could count how many pets there are whose name has a T in it, two. Let's talk about sum. So sum is another one of these aggregators. So let's say that pets have PetSmart points. And right now, they all have null PetSmart points. Well, keep in mind, we want it to be zero. We'll give your cat 500 PetSmart points. And actually, let's give uh, Rory like 300 PetSmart points. Sum their PetSmart points. And let's just get uh, all of the PetSmart points that all of the pets have all together. Let's sum up PetSmart points from pets that have a name that contains a R or contains a capital G. All right, so we talked about sum. Now let's see average. Okay, the average happens to be 100. Because 300 plus 500 is 800, and there's eight pets, 800 divided by 800, right? So let's see what the average pet smart points are for Grey Wind and Rory, which is where pet.name is equal to Rory or pet.name is equal to Grey Wind's. So let's look up Rory's ID and Grey Wind's ID. You see, Rory is actually number four, and Grey Wind is number eight. So pet.id equals Rory was four and pet.id is equal to eight because Ray one was eight. Same same deal, right? Another way to do this is to use what's called an in well, what I call an inquiry. I don't know what it's properly called. <laughs> I call it an inquiry, where pet.id is in for eight. That's the same thing as saying pet id equals four or pet id equals eight. So I could do pet.name is in Rory, uh, okay. Grey Wind. Show you guys how to do a SQL comment as well. That's just commenting it out, that part. Next thing on our list is to cover inserts. So I'm going to do insert into pet, and then I'm going to save the columns, and let's just do put the name of the column, which it might be pet.name. Uh, so values and then Mimi. And now Mimi has joined us. 450 pet smart points. So that's an insert, really. You can insert more than one thing at the same time. Now, next, update. So so 
So let's say I wanted to capitalize Rory's name. So you can see one row affected down here. And now if I refresh over here, Rory has a capital R. You can destroy, if you don't put where, it's gonna destroy all of them. All right, so last but not least, let's talk about joins. Okay, let's say that I also have another table called PetSmart Location. So I'm gonna grab this database name, test4271. I'm gonna go into my local project. I'm gonna configure it to use a local data store. And I'm actually gonna use this new adapter called Sales SQL. I'm gonna use root at 127.0.0.1, which is my local database. And it's called test427.1, which is a weird name. Then I need to npm install Sales SQL. Let's say I wanna go ahead and generate my PetSmart location model. Forgot to type model. There we go. So you can see now I have a PetSmart location. And maybe my PetSmart location has a street address, which let's just call it address one. And then maybe it has like address two, maybe it has a like city, right? Uh, state, let's use province because, oh man, when you start using the word state and status, you just get all mixed up. Throw zip code in there. Okay. Lift that server. Yeah, you can see it actually wiped all of our stuff, right? Well, it, it managed to keep our pet. All right, so we got a pet, we got pet smart locations. Let's go ahead and create one. Pet smart location dot create. We won't even put like the rest of the address right now. We'll just put like city, Austin, province, Texas. And remember we're on the command, we're on the REPL, so we have to do dot log. There's the Austin location of PetSmart. And we're gonna associate a pet to a PetSmart location. Currently being groomed at PetSmart location. And so we're actually gonna say model PetSmart. So let's kill a server, start it again. Auto migrations are happening. We're gonna see this new column. And this does have null and that's on purpose. Really, you don't ever want a timestamp to be zero. This would be one second after midnight in Greenwich, England. So pet.find is gonna give us all our pets. Let pet.find eight is the same thing as writing pet.find ID is equal to eight. So anyways, here's uh, here's Greywind. You can see that Greywind is not currently being groomed at a PetSmart location. I could say that Greywind is gonna be groomed at PetSmart location number one. And you can see that when I do that find, currently being groomed at PetSmart location one. You can also do populate now joins are a lot more flexible than this and under the covers when you're using a SQL database this is using joins in sales and waterline joins are similar and they serve a similar purpose they're just a more flexible lower level abstraction I'm gonna do left outer join and then I specify the name of another table pet smart location on pet dot current equals uh, PetSmart location dot ID. That's our table. So I wanna I wanna join up the pet this table right here with this table here, the PetSmart locations table. But when you combine two tables like this, you've got to say like, how do I know which rows go with which rows? And the way we're gonna know is this on thing. So we're saying this the, this table and this column. That column is gonna be joined up with PetSmart location dot ID which is the ID column of this table, the PetSmart location. So let's just run it. Now you've got two created ads. You got two updated ads and you got two columns that are both called ID. So we're gonna do select star from PetSmart location to start on. So we do pet being green at PetSmart location. We want when that is equal to that, right? That equals that. That equals that. Let's do PetSmart location dot city, the province. So this is weird, right? We've got three rows. But what we really want is one row per PetSmart location. Let's try this. Let's try doing, uh, what this is doing is it's grouping up PetSmart location by PetSmart location ID, and then it's counting the number of rows that match. So to recap, we talked about select statements, how to use stuff other than select star to say which specific columns you want, how to use the where clause to filter the results you're getting, pagination with limit and offset, which in sale of the waterline are going to be called limit and skip. Sorting your data with order by. And we also talked about how to do sum and count and average aggregations. Then we talked about some basic DML, insert, update, delete. 
And then we did a really extremely basic intro to joins, mainly focused on left outer join just for simplicity. And that's pretty much it. And we touched on group by a little bit, so see you next time.